Hello and welcomes everyone, Anfwolf here, bringing you another video of Star Wars The Old Republic. You may notice the intro screen has changed slightly because this is the newest expansion release, Knights of the Fallen Empire. They just recently changed things up and the servers just literally opened maybe about 10 minutes ago. And so I thought before we got into any of the storyline, I would do a pre-story, a kind of explanation of some of the 4.0 changes and basically show you around the Imperial fleet uh, before we actually get into any of the actual gameplay itself. So first things first, obviously I am playing on the EU server Red Eclipse. Obviously a few people have asked me over the time, both of them, um, obviously Valakor storyline, Malcolm and Asura's. Everyone's been kind of curious, and if they haven't had the answer already, here you are. I'm on the Red Eclipse server. I have 22 characters active on it right now. I am a subscriber, because I tend to always be. And the first thing you'll notice is this leg legendary status. Legendary status is achieved by completing the full 8 class specific stories in the original Star Wars The Old Republic. Upon completion, legendary players are granted a unique in-game portrait frame and viewed as legendary across the galaxy. In addition, I think you gain a great bonus to your presence stat, which affects your companions. Um, I think it's your companion health and your companion damage or healing, things like that. But um, of course, I will be playing in the Knights of the Fallen Empire storyline Malcolm. Sorry, not Malcolm. Valakar, my bounty hunter. I just saw Malcolm there for some reason. But yeah, I'll be playing Valakar because obviously we've taken him all the way through the Rise of the Hood Cartel expansion and the Shadow of Revan expansion. I may create a new character. I've been tempted to play as Mana, my um, Mako lookalike um, as an Imperial um, agent. They have changed the missions. Oh, I just elbowed my desk there. They've changed the missions now as well. I'll try and show you that when we get onto the Imperial fleet. But basically, there are story missions. And then there are missions that while you're on the world are related to the class storyline. And then there is kind of optional exploration missions. They've also changed all of the heroics now. There used to be heroic 2 plus and heroic 4 missions. They've adjusted the difficulty apparently on all of them. So they're now all heroic 2 plus missions. So technically we can complete them with our companion. Every mission, apparently, can now be done with our companion. Maybe not the operations, but or like the flashpoints where you kind of would need four people. There is a few solo flashpoints which we have done in the expansions, but no, um, yeah, there is all the heroics that we should encounter on the worlds in the future and previously should be Heroic 2 Plus now. So if I do create a new character, we can just go through all the heroics and have a look at them, which would be tempting. Also, I think the 12 times class experience is no longer available, but I think they've increased the maybe the amount of experience you gain from the story-specific missions. Not only that, they've introduced a level sync, so if you're over-leveled, so you're level 16, you're going to Alderaan. I think they used that example. You're meant to be level 27 to 32, something like that. And you would gain no experience for doing any missions there if you were level 60. Now though, when you visit Alderaan, you will be kind of de-leveled in a way that you'll gain the experience you were meant to gain as if you were level 27 to 32 on Alderaan. So you'd still gain a good amount of experience. Um, I think it's tailored to your actual level. Um, so you'd gain a lot more as a level 60 than you would at that point. But you know what I mean, The probably the ratio, the percentage of experience you'd gain would be correct. I think that's right. I could be wrong. But anyway, it looks like it's marked that we've completed these three uh, storylines, which is correct. We are three out of eight class stories. We might do the operative, maybe the trooper. I kind of like both of those um, class missions up to... I think I've done chapter one of both of them as well. Actually, I think I've done chapter one of all the storylines now. But I do like the um, Imperial Agent. Mainly because I like to play, play a Mako look-alike. 
But uh, yeah, anyways, let's get ourselves onto the Imperial fleet and look at both Valakor. And then we'll just take a tour around the fleet itself and see what's changed. Because it looks like a lot has. We'll probably be looking at Anya as well, who is my Cybertech crafter. Because obviously they've made some crafting changes. And she'd probably be the best one to look at to see what uh, modifications we can still make for my characters. So yeah, without further ado, let's um, get into my character. Oh, while this is loading... Oh, what's this? Oh, this is the same interlude from the Shadow of Revan completion. With the new expansion just being released, there may be some instability... There may be some server crashes. I may accidentally disconnect. If that occurs, I can only apologise. I'll try and merge the videos together. Obviously, I'll give you a disclaimer if anything does happen of that um, ilk, basically. But yeah, I'm hoping that it goes well and hoping that it remains stable for us. Especially once we get into recording some of the story elements of this new uh, expansion. But for this video, it's not such a, such a big deal since I'm showing things off. Um, but yeah, I'll just throw my notepad aside. I'm busy um, editing something, so the game might be loading a little bit slower than it normally does. Yeah, I was trying to. I was finishing off um, a series of Sid Meier's Civilization Five just this morning actually and I was still editing the final video of that series but it gives me something to upload over the weekend instead of just always Star Wars The Old Republic it gives a bit more diversity for the channel I'll just wait for this to load so yeah I imagine a lot of the NPCs are selling different things. They've changed the commendations, they've changed the names of them, but they still do the same thing. I think they're called data stores or data crystals now. We'll have a look at it when we get inside. Oh, here we go. Black screen of death. There's only two Imperial fleets. Welcome to the Knights of the Fallen Empire. Let's have a look at this while we're waiting for the background to actually load up. Okay. Experience the new, the epic new storyline at level 60. Travel to your ship and pick up the mission. Chapter 1, The Hunt. To begin. Your mission starts with an explosive first chapter to the Knights of the Fallen Empire story arc. You'll pick up where the story left off after Zeist. Delivered in all new episodic story chapters. The planet Zakul has become the new seat of power in the galaxy. Its skyscrapers reach towards the stars, while its lowest levels brim with danger and crime, all surrounded by a vast and savage swamp. Those who wish to evade Zakul's power hide out on the asylum, a smuggling den floating among the clouds where freedom and anarchy reign, and the shadowy forest world of Odessan holds many mysteries. Okay. New abilities and powers await you as you progress to level 65. Oh, there you go. Let's load it up. All operations have now been raised to 65 and have all new gear and rewards waiting for you. All your favorite flashpoints have, been, have had solo modes added with all new rewards. Okay, so we can do flashpoint solo now. The core leveling experience from 1 to 60 has been redesigned and with a streamlined quest progression. So yeah, um, as I say... They've changed up some of the storyline system there. This is annoying. We'll give it a few moments. Let's just look at our... Let's look at these. We don't want to do the Seeker Droids. PvP. We still haven't done um, Click on Group Finder to find a random flashpoint yet. So we're still waiting for everything to load. Everything must be crazy right now. Give it a few moments. There's, oh, there's some legendary players who have completed all of their class storylines. Let's look at my... Is my interface fine? It looks alright. We've lost some health, it seems. We, w we did normally... Oh, wait a second. If I buff myself up... Yeah, we did have 49,000 health before I left. 
See if anyone else has this black screen of death. Yeah, they've changed the companion system as well. We have some mail to look at as, at the same time. Let's uh, change my eight interface slightly. Can I make this wider? There you go, that's better. Right, we can't really move anywhere. This is not ideal. <laughs> it's probably because I'm editing so much stuff in the background my CPU may not be BBM. May be upset with me. Anyhow, while we have this black screen of death at least, let's have a look at some things. So we can summon our companions, it looks like. Looks like she's lost some abilities. Mako. She has a lot more health than I do. 58,000. Holy hell. So we have this... I think it's called Influence now. Rather than... Affin... Uh, oh, there we are. Hey, there we go. Finally. I was getting this... Oh, Mako, you've lost some cloves. Getting lonely? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, we got some gifts there. Mako, you really lost some cloves, though. No? What the? Oh, my inventory's changed. Okay. Oh, she no longer needs a vibro knife. Okay. Anyway, these are things I need to look at. So yeah, okay. Let's have a moment. Welcome to the Imperial Fleet once again. I'm gonna be learning things as you are, so obviously bear with me. One thing we'll notice first of all, let's look at our character screen. Okay, level 60, we have Basically all the same things we had. We're missing a few skills, but we'll look at our skills momentarily. Mastery is now... You no longer have aim, strength, willpower, and cunning. All those are now classes mastery. They're all the same thing, basically. Um, so yeah, items have mastery and endurance, and then obviously they're alternate items as well. Obviously we have power, which we're not using. Critical, we're not worried about. We're mostly worrying about um, endurance, obviously. Our social and valor is absolutely zero. Let's have a look at our defense. Still reasonable. We do have our tanking cylinder up. Okay, let's have a look at Mako. Oh, wait a second. Where's our presence? We have presence still? Yeah. the effectiveness of our companion. So she no longer uses yet pieces or implants. She doesn't have a secondary weapon, which was her vibro knife. Interesting. Okay. And obviously our ship, it can't be upgraded. I may not have never showed this screen off to you all before. But yes, your ship can have a, you can do them um, ship missions and you can obviously give it various buffs. Not something I've never done. I've never shown it. I've never shown it off before. People have also mentioned why don't I use these um, item slots, these outfit slots? It's because I've never learned how to use them properly. To be perfectly honest, I use the uh, the old um, like unify colors, customize appearance. I'm old school that way, old fashioned. Right. Let's have a look. We're missing a few abilities. What was there? I think it was my shoulder missiles. Let's look at our skills. We need to replay with our utility points. There is, I think, 
they've played with our utility skills. So we still have oil slick. Let's summon our hollow statue. Ah, jet charge. Heroic moment, okay. Jet charge we need that immediately. Heroic moment, we can pop there. Seize the moment, restoring 2% of your maximum health every 3 seconds. Requires an active companion in force. It lasts 84 seconds. No make over any pants. So let's have a look. What's changed for the shield tech, which is probably what we're going to be playing. Oil slick at level 10. Which is fine. Overload. Combust is the same. Flame engine is the same. Our heat blast. Just here. See if there's any skills that have changed for us. Translocate. That's a new ability. Um, swap places with a group member and bestow a benign presence upon them for 6 seconds. Targets with a benign presence are ignored by most enemies and cannot be leapt or pulled. And are immune to interrupts and ability activation pushback. Probably very good for PvP. If someone has the hutball, maybe. Um, you can make them immune for 6 seconds. Or maybe if you have the hutball, translocate them as well. It has a range of 30 meters. Pretty good, actually. We still have our Firestorm. Excellent. Coolant. Shield. So, Heat Absorbers. Heat Blast increases shield absorption. And we gain another utility point at level 65. What is our um, shield chance? 28%. Okay. Let's have a look at our utility points then. We need to put uh, We have six available. Increases movement speed by 15. It's tempting. The radius of flame streak is also tempting. And the flame streak damage. Yeah, okay. Movement speed, flame streak range, flame streak damage. Uh, pyro shields always good. Obviously, when activate your energy shield ignites in a blaze, scorching attackers for so much animal elemental damage when they deal direct damage. Stealth scan increases the movement of all allies within the scan area, excluding yourself. Okay, that's a new one. Grapple hook, maybe. Oh, probably quell. Jet speed. Activating jet charge grants jet speed, increasing movement speed by 30% by 4 seconds. The duration of jet speed is refreshed if attacked while it's active. Okay, that's good. Um, Is that the one that we really want? Uh, call to overload... Um, actually, the healing, the shield, the healing shoulder cannon's really good as well. But um, yeah, there you go. Okay, we need translocate. will be here somewhere. Let's pop that there for the moment. We may not make too much use of it. What was there? I'm not too sure. Oh well. So we're, we're missing our shoulder cannon. Has that been removed? Or is that for someone else now? It must be for us. Otherwise it wouldn't be available as a hero like a heroic item. Maybe you need to unlock it at like a later level. I guess we'll find out. Right, let's see. What else are we doing? Let's have a look at this influence thing again. Yeah, influence is similar to how we had affection. Obviously, but rather than just improve it. If you're talking to a character and they like something, another character may not like it and they'll remember it. Influence, obviously, I think we'll get more 
contacts more companions later on as we form an alliance against this Zakul Empire. Obviously, we'll learn more about that later on. Let's have a look. So yeah, we have this influence. So let's have a look. Influence, rank 10 of 50. Plus 500 presence when summoned. Plus 15% time efficiency on crew skill tasks. Plus 5% crit rate for crew skill tasks. Okay. That's fair. Have we lost any companions? I Oh, we've lost a droid. We've lost our droid, I think. Oh well, that's a shame. But yeah, obviously the rank can be increased a lot more now. Up to 50, in fact. It obviously gives us a bit of a bio. Okay, we have no contacts currently. We have a crew skills. It hasn't increased, it's still 500. But they've changed to like grades now. Grade 8 is the highest. I think that's 55 plus. Right, is there anything else we need to look at? Inventory's changed. B used to be inventory, but now it's crew skills. So these are still bound, so they're absolutely useless to us now. And these are all the items that people no longer can wear as well. It's kind of a shame. Uh, we'll store these away for the moment. We may make use of them in the future. So yeah, we have common data crystals, glowing data crystals, and there's a greater one. What's it called? Radiant data crystals. Obviously, they've changed the group finder setup. We're not going to be looking at that just yet. But obviously, we may be looking to do flashpoints in the near future. Ah, let's see now. What else should we look at? Uh, let's have a look at the cartel market, actually. Welcome to the cartel market. The new... Well, it's actually the same. They've introduced looks like a new crate. For the release... Obviously, that's a single pack. What's pop? Uh, used to have a new, not not what's popular. Featured. So they have a grand die pack, gold mounts, one mount of vehicle of gro gold qu quality, gold quality armor. I hope gold arm quality is like this adaptive armor. It doesn't actually give you stats or anything. It must be appearance more than anything. Okay, let's have a look at the um, the map then. We want to look at probably supplies. We want to look at supplies because we want to look at the next... Um, Available missions. Um, and next available item modifications, I should say. Looks like we, um... I keep looking for my inventory. We still kept our amount of data crystals, actually. This is who we want to look at. I think this is where we are. Yeah, okay. Level 65 armor. Whatever you need, Hunter. We can get it for you. So we need... I think the, the demolishers are the tanking gear. So yeah, they are offering purple. Let's just buy some. Uh, can we buy it? We need to be level 65, okay. So it does offer us a good increase in our stats. So really, we could have saved up, saved up on our glowing data crystals. And the best gear at the moment is a good jump in all stats, basically. Okay. Interesting. Come back, you might learn something. 
Let's have a look. Your operations terminal. Complete the weekly missions. Complete some hard mode flashpoints, our tactical flashpoints. Let's have a look at our experience right now. We need 1 million experience. I think that's less. I think we needed 1.3 or something to get to level 60 before. I could be wrong. Right. Is there anything else we really need to look at right now? Obviously, we're looking at vendors. Level 8, modification 14, 18, 22. Oh, so they only have the modification vendors anymore. They don't have the... Equipment vendors. Looks like they've got rid of the equipment vendors here as well. Let's see what level 60 modifications they offer. You won't find a better bargain. Level 60 gear. Is it better what I'm wearing? Let's have a look. We need to find... Say... The versatile barrel. What of how we need to find maybe a better armoring, resistive armoring. One ninety. They've changed all the mods as well. They've changed what they're called. Also, I don't like the how they look, but that's my personal preference. Resistive armoring, I think, is the one with the highest endurance. One hundred eight mastery, one hundred fourteen endurance. Come back anytime. So it's actually what we're wearing. Um, on him at least. Um, yeah, so it would be better for compared to level 58 gear. How much is what it can actually? I get for you? Only two common data crystals. Come so we could anytime. boost ourselves slightly, but it's not worthwhile doing just yet. Uh, okay. Now there's someone I need to find. A Herald of Revan. Yeah. Well, I think we need to check this guy out first. And then we'll switch over to Anara quickly. Just to look at her Cybertech ability. And see what's changed. As I say, because I normally like to use her to build my item modifications rather than just buy them. And then we'll look at our mailbox, actually. Okay, the Herald of Revan's just here somewhere. There you go, you might as well. Oh, role selection. So, wait, Mako can be a tank? Ah, Mako can now be a tank, apparently. <laughs> Take a look at the stock. What can okay, I get you? you don't sell anything different. Your money's always good here. Come again. Okay. It's going to be very busy, I imagine there's even more. Oh, still only two fleets at the moment. Let's have a look at our mailbox. I think this video has turned out to be longer than I thought it would good was going to be. Congratulations, you now have access to Knights of the Fallen Empire, the digital expansion. For those still preparing to battle the galaxy's newest threat, the Eternal Empire, we've streamlined our core leveling experience tremendously. Not only will you level faster, but your adventures will focus on those missions that truly define your character. If you can't wait to experience the storyline for Knights of the Fallen Empire, we've given all our subscribers the ability to create a new level 60 character for free. You can do this at Character Select. If you're in the face of the loan, your companions are more powerful than ever. Not only will new personalities join your crew, your companions will also have the ability to adapt to whatever needs you have, be it a tank healer or damage dealer. That being said, actually, yeah, there is going to be new characters who join us, and depending on our decisions in this new episodic expansion, some of them might even die, some of them might refuse to join us. We have some new blasters. Thank you for being part of our new Knights of the Fallen Empire community. As a subscriber rewards promotion, we received Nico Okar's blaster set, his duster. Uh, Nico Okar, if you haven't reckoned, if you don't know the name, 
if you've seen the original trailer for when the Republic are orbiting Korriban and then the Sith Empire attack them, uh, Nico is the scoundrel with the twin blaster pistols in that uh, cinematic. Your Nico Okok companion is here. You have unlocked a legendary gunslinger companion and famous smuggler with a bottomless bag of tricks. He's the perfect ally for a tight spot. You can encounter Nico and learn more about him after completing Chapter 9 of Knights of the Fallen Empire. But if you'd like to begin travelling with him immediately, you can use the attached item to unlock him as a companion at any time. Using this item will not prevent you from playing through his recruitment mission. He, dis he disappeared from the galactic stage after the return of the Sith Empire. However, there have been sightings of a man fitting Nico's description frequenting canteen cantinas across wild space. If anyone can convince the captain of the Red Shifter to come out of retirement, it's you. So we have an item. For those who do not wish to encounter him naturally. Um, I kind of do. We have an item, but I kind of want to meet him naturally. Um, thank you for being part of Fallen Empire community. He has a bonus experience item, and we have a swoop bike. For being a subscriber before the 19th of October, I think it was. Uh, thank you, I guess. Okay. Oh, I keep, I'm going to keep pressing B to try and get to my inventory now. It's kind of ingrained on me. Okay, we're going to sell all our miscellaneous goods, and then we'll switch over to... These use all products only as intended. Well, then we'll switch over to Anya, have a quick look at crafting, and then we'll call this video a day. Oh, looks like they've, um... Have they organized? Oh, because of course there's only mastery now. Any better med packs beyond level 60? Level 55? Nope, doesn't seem so. Okay. Yeah, let's switch over to Anya. And then we'll basically get ourselves set up to explore this expansion. Hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. As I say, actually, as a brief disclaimer, if you are playing Star Wars The Old Republic yourself and are interested in any of the storyline, feel free to stop this video, or feel free to stop after this video and play it yourself because obviously I will be going through the entire story elements as I can and therefore there will be spoilers. And so if you want to experience the storyline for yourself, you best um, play it for yourself first, basically. Unless you're just along for the ride, basically. See, Anya hasn't even completed chapter one yet. She's who I use for my um, cyber tech. Obviously, I know arm rings have been removed from her, but I think she's gained the ability to make enhancements instead. So we're going to take a look at that. Because I want to try and make some of my level 61 onwards uh, modifications, like items, basically. At least we don't have to make them for Mako anymore, or my companions. We just need to make them for my main character now. Which is important. Saves time, saves money. I don't know how I feel about this expansion so far. Right, let's um, get down to the crafting trainer. Oh. Oh, of course. We've lost our droid, so I only have Mako to craft, thing for me, to craft things for me now as well. That's really not good. Actually, I'm not even in the right place anymore. Oh, I was, I was at the Galactic Trade Market. We need to go over the crew skills. Okay. 
We'll get over to the crew skills section of the Imperial Fleet and then we'll look at our uh, crew skill abilities. Oh, oh well. It's going to take me longer to build things now, which is slightly annoying, but so be it. Okay, let's have a look. So, Cybertech. Archive. These are things I already have. Oh, yes, we have these new. How do they change? Oh, no, they put everything together. Well, that's just awkward. That's an earpiece. You used to have these all separated. Like, em implants, earpieces. Uh, we need our Cybertech. Where is the Cybertech? Oh, Cybertech's here. Okay. So we need these assembly components to, um combine dash and silica and then use these to make certain schematics yeah components are apparently a main thing now I think we need this one we need earpieces we don't need earpieces so we'll just close that one down enhancements okay let's scroll down to the bottom here no only level 56 enhancements That's not a good thing. Unless they were hiding somewhere. Level 56. Mods, okay. So there is no... Interesting. I wonder if you need to get the schematics to actually make the later modifications. Maybe there is. Maybe it's something like that. They did mention something about schematics, but I didn't fully read into it so much. But if so, that's going to be really annoying. But yeah, you need assembly components now, which combine... Let's have a look. Say if I want to make my... Uh... They do the same thing now. Oh no. That's good. That gives me power. That gives me deflection. So yeah, we need a Farium Cyber Assembly Mod. We need a BioCell Memory Core. Adaptive Circuitry. Yeah, we need a lot more things. BioCell Memory Core and Adaptive Circuitry. Can we buy them from you? Take a look. Everything you see is for sale. No, we can't. Oh dear. A lot of things I'm gonna have to Come learn. Back anytime. Oh well. I'm gonna look into crafting. It doesn't look like I can make the next level of item modifications though just yet. Which is slightly concerning for me. I'd like to actually get myself set up and prepared. Oh well. We'll load in the Valicorn and I'll probably break this video. Should have probably just broken the, broke the video anyway. Let's get back to the Imperial Fleet. But no, um, let me know what you think of the changes in Expansion 4.0. I'm kind of half and half. I'm glad that I got up my check charge ability back. That was worrying because apparently we were meant to get our level 61. Which I wasn't um, so keen on. But yeah, we'll start looking at episode 1, the hunt, in the next video. I think this is the Imperial Agent, Sith Inquisitor. Bounty Hunter is bottom left. Yes, it is. Let's get down to our hangar. Let's get let's get on board our ship and actually get get ourselves ready to get ourselves away. Mm. 
We'll leave Mako as a healer because I kind of like her as a healer. She looks like she's lost a lot of her effective, like attacking abilities. She is just going to be a pure healer now. But that's fine. Ah, back on the D5 Mantis. I've missed you. So is our droid just totally gone now? We'll see, actually. He would normally be here. Yeah, he's gone. Totally. Oh, that would have been so much better for them, a Republic character, because he used to always annoy me as Malcolm. Looks like Torian wants to talk to us. Galt wants to talk to us. Blizz wants to talk to us. Actually, uh, everyone apart from Mako has something they want to say. Has a large amount of common data crystals. These each contain 99 common data crystals now. It used to be basic commendations. Is there anything else I need to take with me? Could take my pirate hat. Maybe? No, let's not. <laughs> Anyhow. Get ourselves enjoying the lovely view of the Imperial fleet. Uh, chapter 1 to hunt, yep. Yeah. When we come back, that's where I'll be going to the mission console and we'll get ourselves away. Well, now what do we do? Uh, that's a good question. Whoa, camera went crazy. So, yeah, I'll park myself in the usual spot. I uh, say, it's been a couple of weeks for me since I've actually recorded any Star Wars The Old Republic, but I look forward to exploring this new expansion with you. As I say, feel free to comment, let me know what you think, both of the expansion and of, obviously, what you think of the series, basically, what you think we should maybe do. Uh, with that in mind, obviously with what we should do, be, in, be aware that I probably record these in, in advance, I normally do. Um, I always have in this series, basically, because I basically not want to put the game down. And I've got a few days off now up until the coming Saturday, so I'll probably put a lot of time into Star Wars The Old Republic. But uh, yeah, this of course has been Anne Wolf, and I will see you more for like four more next time. Until then, bye bye now.